I want to start with the machete attack situation. Um, terrified the city and horrified the nation, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, as we understand it, the FBI was aware of the suspect, mm -hmm. but the NYPD didn't have that information. Is, am I correct there? All right, so the guardian lead for that individual was actually in Maine, and there would have been no reason for the FBI to notify us. There was no nexus at the time uh, to New York City at that, at that point. No need to know. Well, we would have liked to have known, but there was, they did everything proper in Maine. They interviewed the subject, and they were able to uh, put a lookout on him for his travel. So um, these lone wolf attacks are something that we definitely have uh, our challenges with, obviously, because if you don't know uh, who the person is or where they're going, it's a little bit difficult for us to be able to intercept that attack. And sure. I think the officers did a phenomenal job in this case. Should They absolutely did. Should the JTTF know about every person on, on local watch lists around the country? Well, it's a little difficult. These guardian leads are called in every day all over the country, so it would be very difficult for everyone to know about every single Like how many? Is there a number? I uh, would have to ask the FBI that, but yeah. I would say there are quite a few. Yeah. Would you want it to be changed to know to know that information? I think it's, it, it's actually probably um, it, it's good for us to know, but if there is no nexus in New York City, there really wouldn't be a reason for us to know about that. We would like to know, but there are far too many of them for us to be able to track every single one that will come across the FBI's desk. Yeah. The chilling aspect of this is that this time it was a machete. Mm -hmm. What if it were a long gun. What if it was an automatic rifle? I mean, my goodness, right? We are, we are always cognizant of the threat, and I think when we look at what happened in this particular case, our officers were at that location to protect that event, and they did exactly that. They were able to neutralize that threat, and uh, thankfully they're going to be okay. But I will tell you, we work hand in glove with the JTTF. We have members that are embedded into that task force, so uh, they are our partners, and uh, we appreciate everything they uh, bring to us uh, when there is information and when there is a threat. So you don't feel like it should be changed to have all that kind of information on an ongoing basis? We have a great relationship with the FBI. We get information from them constantly. Okay. It would be overkill is what I think I hear you say. I wouldn't say it was overkill. Not when we're talking about people's mm -hmm. lives and people being harmed. I would never mm -hmm. say it's overkill, but we have a great relationship where we share information. Okay. Let's talk about crime. Um, you know the data, but just for our audience's purposes, murders and shootings down last year. Everything else is up. Rape, robbery, felony assault, burglary, grand larceny, petty larceny, hate crimes. Overall major crime is up 23% last year over the year before, right? People, people literally feel this. So if we ask New Yorkers the question today, am I safer today? than I was a year ago. What, what, what should the answer be? I'm going to correct you a little bit, though, because we're just under 23%. It's actually 22% right now. And in December, we are down in major crime. Okay. And for the quarter, we're going to be down in major crime as well. When we started at the end of the year. At the end of the year but for the, the quarter. year overall. Year over year. And I'm going to tell you, so when we began this year, we were over 45%. In February, we were up 48% year over year. We have been able to cut into that increase all year long. And it wasn't an accident. We had a plan. We had a strategy. We drove that plan. And these are the results. With all the things that are in place without the structural changes that we've been asking for in legislation, we were still able to cut down those major crimes. We're at a 27-year high in gun arrests. Our major crime arrests are up. Our, our trend is looking very good. So at the end of this quarter, we know we're going to be able to post a decrease in crime. So the answer to the question, am I safer today than I was January last year, what's the answer to that? I would say absolutely. Um, I, that's not that we don't have work to do. I understand that. Our major crime right now is being driven by grand larcenies, and we're developing a plan to be able to address that because we understand that's obviously people are concerned about that as well. But that is what's driving our numbers. Burglaries, robberies, murders, all down for the month of December. So we're moving our strategy to be able to address the drivers. When you say grand larceny, does that include cyber and technology? A lot of it is fraud. How big a concern is that? right well, now, because well, that's hard to see for the average person, especially the elderly. Absolutely, and that's what's driving our numbers. We have a lot of scams uh, in effect as well. There's an elderly scam where they call a person and tell them that your grandson uh, was in an accident or he was arrested, please send us a lot of money. So uh, we've been uh, working on an initiative to be able to stop the companies that wire money from allowing people to do that, basically to educate them about, hey, did you call your grandson? Is he okay? Other cyber crimes as well we're concerned about, but we're also concerned about grand larceny autos as well. Those are what's driving our numbers. We're up 40% in grand larceny needs at one point. What did you do to drive murders down? And could that be applied to other crimes? We did apply that to other crimes as well. You know, we worked on a strategy in the beginning of the year where we said, what are the drivers of these crimes? Violence 
is the biggest issue for us in the city. We began this year knowing, the mayor said to me, that is your mandate. You have to lower the violence in the city, you have to lower shootings, you have to lower victims, you have to lower homicides, and that's what we did. We focused on the people, the places, and the things that drive this type of crime. Our investigations were enhanced. We deployed resources in certain areas. We have gang and crew stat where we talk about who was committing these crimes. We know who they are. There are a limited number of people in this city that are committing the bulk of the crimes, and that's who we focus on. And in September, toward the end of September, we actually announced a plan to be able to use those techniques to focus on other crimes as well. And we're seeing those results now. What's this year going to look like when it comes to crime data? We have this conversation a year from now, what's that going to look like? The trend is going to continue to go downward. We are implementing a number of new strategies. We're going to uh, actually announce a strategic plan for the year, actually for the next two years. Uh, this month as well, the mayor is going to announce some plans uh, for his State of the City address too. Okay. Let's talk about quality of life, the ongoing eternal New York City question, right? Um, Bikes in particular, bike mayhem, mm -hmm. bike riders on the sidewalk, going the wrong way, going through lights, ignoring, you know, ignoring every single law. Everybody knows someone who's either almost been hit or been hit. Almost nobody knows someone who's gotten a ticket for riding a bike and causing all this mayhem. Is it time to start enforcing that in a more aggressive way? Oh, it's past time. We do enforce that. We I've never seen it. Oh, no one well, I know has ever seen it. Well, I don't know who you know, but we have been enforcing that, especially during the summer. We had the ATVs that are a menace right. uh, in Manhattan. But and, I'm talking and the about the basic, well. everyday person riding a bike, mm -hmm. the delivery guys, yep. you know, these 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 e-bikes that are going the wrong way and, and almost killing people every day. We right. are enforcing that as well, and I will tell you, you're correct, because I had a number of meetings with people, and they are concerned about that, right. obviously. They're using the bike lanes, but I think during the pandemic, a lot of people took to bicycles. There were a lot of delivery services that are using bicycles, so we have to address that as well. We have to crack down on it. People are getting hurt. People are scared to walk into bike lanes because someone's coming in the wrong direction, and that's why we had to focus on that. It's scared to walk on the sidewalk. Cannot have that. that that's just out of control, right? Absolutely. So how do you get that? Do you have the manpower? We do have the manpower. People power. Power. We, well, Sorry. <laughs> well, we say staffing, right? Yes. So, uh, but you don't have to be a man to be the man, so it's okay to say man power when you want to. Uh, it, it's just fine. Uh, but we do. We have a transportation bureau. We have uh, officers on patrol who are addressing these issues as well because we know it's a concern. Marijuana. Everybody's talking about it. Illegal dispensaries all over the place. It's not in your um, jurisdiction to enforce that, is it? Well, we, as you know, we took a number of the, the we call them weed trucks off the street in the city. Right. We just take those because it's unlicensed vending. We just take them off the street and right. seize those. But the stores. But we, are, we are addressing the stores as well. I think we, we're going to see now that we're able to use the aggregate uh, uh, factor as opposed to the uh, pure weight for marijuana, excuse me, to be able to enforce uh, some of the stores. But it is a problem. We, some of those stores are victims of robberies as well. So we recognize that we have to have the law catch up to what we're doing so that we're able to enforce the sale of marijuana. Well, you've seen cannabis stores that are opening in the city as well. So right. that's kind of probably going to offset some of it. Why don't we see more cops walking the beat? on a daily basis. So we surged a number of officers walking the street in the city. Actually, during the summer, we had about 1,200 officers that were doing foot patrol in the city. They were uh, part of our field training unit. And we recognized the need, especially in our commercial corridors, to have officers on foot. I think when people see an officer walking down the street, there's a connection there. There's also a feeling that, hey, things are safe or this person is going to be there should something happen. So about 1,200 on foot, we have the officers on patrol that were also put in these areas to make sure that we have that visible presence. We did the same thing in the subway. We put about a thousand extra officers into the subway system to be able to have officers on the platforms and the cars and actually riding the train. Well, the data may be true that if people don't see it in their neighborhood, it doesn't exist, right? And neighborhoods, you said commercial districts, but neighborhoods. Are they in neighborhoods? Do they, they walk the neighborhoods? They are walking I haven't seen them in well. Just well, saying. Well, where do you live? I don't want to get into I know that you right don't. Here. That's what. <laughs> Um, but you will see more officers on foot patrol. We recognize that's a valuable tool in the police department. Absolutely. It is a deterrent. We, well, we're, we have officers. We are hiring more officers. We're doing pretty well with our recruitment efforts as well. Is it a staffing issue? Are you short? Would you have more officers? Were you fully fully staffed? We do have fewer officers than we had before, um, but we are ramping up efforts. Obviously, during COVID, we had some restrictions when it came to recruitment and test taking, but we just graduated almost 500 officers last week. We're going to be swearing in another group this month as well. Attrition is a big deal. Um, starting salaries at NYPD, I don't know, the public would be shocked to know. 42 grand or so for an NYPD officer. On Long Island, it's in the 50s, right? In San Francisco, it's $100,000. Should cops be making more money in this city? I don't think we pay our heroes enough. And I will say that every single day of the week, but obviously I don't 
uh, negotiate contracts, but our officers every single day wake up and try to make this city safer. I cannot tell you how privileged I am to lead them. What should they be paid to start? That's a conversation a with the unions. What's a fair number? I think the union will be able to negotiate that with the city. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to touch that one. Um, removing homeless people from the street, this is the mayor's idea to give them the treatment that they need. Mm -hmm. Extremely difficult. The training. Do you feel like the training is, is sufficient, is fair, is digestible to officers? Do they get it? Do, what's that look like? With the Mayor's New Initiative, actually, we actually made a video to uh, have our officers bone up on the law and how to approach people. The Encampment Removal Task Force had a number of encounters with people as well, but this is not so much a law enforcement-centric initiative. We are working with our partners across the city to be able to provide the services that people need. Taking people who are suffering from mental illness off the street to basically give them the assistance that they need. Um, I agree with the Mayor that the streets and the subways are no place for people to live. Are you equipped to handle that though? To take the people off the streets? Street. We have done this before. The, the, the NYPD has always taken people uh, who need mental health uh, assessments off the street. So this is not new to us and we weren't caught off guard. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I saw you give a talk at a private home last summer. You were, by all accounts, um, engaging, expansive, thoughtful, funny. Um, you, were, you were everything that you're not at the podium. Uh, when the, when the cameras I'm not engaging are, when at the, the cameras point? are rolling, well, you were you were really I mean you were really connecting with people mm -hmm. in a way. Why don't we see more of that of so, you in, in public? So I was a detective for years, and I am a person who needs to have their facts straight because I think New Yorkers are very particular and they're very smart. They want to know the facts, they want to know them clear, and they want them concisely. But they so. also want to know you. Don't we have a right to know you to to know our commissioner? Uh, well, one hundred percent. But the biggest job in the city next to mayor. It is. Well. I think you do know me. I think when I speak and I give you the information that affects this city and affects our officers and civilians, I think that's how you get to know me. So we're we going to get to know you more in the next couple of years? You'll hear from year? me more. I'll tell you all the facts and how the, the public safety posture of this city every chance I get. Just the facts? <laughs> I'm sure there's more. I'm not as how interesting as you as you would think. I don't want to let people down to think I'm interesting. Everybody's got a story. <laughs> you're, you're from I'm a just, worker. You're I'm a worker, B. <laughs> you're just from up, up, just up the road, Queensbridge Houses, like a mile from here. Um, in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that you would be at 1PP in this role? Was this your goal? So I actually, I didn't want to be a police officer when I first started. It actually uh, was the best decision I ever made to become a police officer. Um, I, every single day, Maurice, I have to say, I pinch myself that I would have been able to do this. Um, Nassau County was a phenomenal agency. I grew up there. I had, a, it was a, a leap to come here. Uh, I had to say I was very happy there. I was the chief of detectives. Um, I had friends. They were my family, and they still are, actually. But to have the opportunity to lead the women and men of the NYPD is something that you just cannot pass on. What would you tell young Keyshawn Sewell, uh, you know, rookie officer, what would you tell her if you, if you had a chance to talk to her today? Um, that there is nothing you can't do, and, and wait until you see what's coming. And no idea, right? No idea. Literally no idea. No idea. Truly. Um, as you know, everyone in this city is a critic. Right? Yes. Uh, they are. That's What's been the most accurate criticism about you and the NYPD in the last year? Uh, about visibility. I think that's one of the criticisms that we get most often. One, you hit on one of them that uh, people didn't see police officers uh, walking down the street, and, and we fixed that. Uh, we're going to do more, obviously. We know we need to do more. I will always say that there's more that we can do. Every time someone is victimized in this city, um, I wonder what we could have done differently and how we can be better. Um, but you will see more officers on the subways. You will see officers walking uh, foot patrols. Um, and I think that's important. And you'll see more connection with our communities as well because uh, we're doing a community comp stat where we ask people to come in from the neighborhoods and talk to us about the challenges in their communities. And I think that's important. We have to be more visible. We have to connect with the people who we serve. We just have a few seconds here. So short answers on these, these uh -oh. next questions. I know you can like do The it. lightning round? Go ahead. That's something like mm -hmm. that. Grade yourself on year one. A, B, C, D. Incomplete. That's too easy. A, B, C, D, F. Incomplete. Just getting started? Just getting started. Okay. What do you wish you knew a year ago that you know now? Oh, that's a good question. Um, what do I wish I knew a year ago? I'll have to come back. I, I've learned so much in the last year, and I wouldn't say I wish I knew that then. I think it's a process, and I think you have to continue to grow and learn every single day. I learn things from uh, everyone, from the, the people who are doing the, the work of the civilians to the chiefs in our department. I think it's a constant process to grow. What would you do over if you could? Oh, gosh. What would I do over? I can't. 
I can't, I can't say what I would do over. You're going to have to email me. Answer. I'm going to have to think about that, Something. what I would do over, because th there are new challenges every day, and I always think about what I could do differently, but I wouldn't say what I would do over. Okay, so differently. How about that? Um, obviously, when, again, whenever someone um, is victimized in this city, I always wonder what I could have done differently, what we could do better, every single time. Biggest surprises over the last year? Um, how quickly I would... Uh, really become a part of this agency and how uh, they have become truly um, part of my family. Greatest accomplishment this past year? The, the year. The drop in crime, the cutting into that 45, 48 we had in February and being able to end the quarter of 2022 with a decrease in major crime. Yeah. Final one here. I hear your hidden talent is that you're a serious chef. So what do you prepare when, you know, friends, family, good folks coming over. What's your dish? What's so your it depends book? on who they are, right? Um, Someone close. My mother uh, was a phenomenal cook, so um, I learned a lot from her. So it really depends on who's coming over. Let's hear I some love, dishes. Oh my goodness. I, well, my mother made a great broccoli casserole. Um, that's one thing, but I, I, I like everything. So I, I'm, I'm pretty good with uh, chicken dishes. If I make something like, um, I, I do a nice franchise. So I do, but I, I'm very particular about what I make and I'm very particular about how I do it. So uh, because people know that I do like to cook and that I'm a chef, people say, oh, why don't you come cook on this show? I am very particular about my utensils, about who stands where, if I'm cooking with someone. So um, that's something I do privately if I have to. Really? And it sounds like you're particular about who's invited. 100%. 100%. So what's yeah, the last you time? You have to have, the good, you have to have a nice mix of people when they come over. And I happen to have a very close group of friends and family, so it's never very big unless I was doing something like um, a barbecue or something like that. But that takes days, a barbecue, because you have to smoke the meat in the backyard. That's a whole big to do. But um, I, I think it's important that you do get together and you do break bread with people and you talk about ideas and different things that go on in your life. You have to have family and friends. They make all yeah. the difference. And with the intensity of this job, when's the last time you had a chance to actually do that? Over a year ago. Wow. Over a year ago. When's the next time you're going to get to do it? Um, that remains to be seen. <laughs> that remains to be seen. There's not a whole lot of time to do it. I'm tru I'll am i tell you again, I'm a worker bee, so I'm yeah. truly focused on work. So I think your your question is actually pretty funny about, you know, I'm, I'm everything I'm not in front of. I that just kind of came out. I wasn't I, planning it that no, that's, way. That, it's okay, <laughs> um, because you're not the only person I say that. People say, oh, does she have a heartbeat? You know, she, she's, she's, a a, she's a robot. Well, um, that's, not, that's not unfair, is it? Well, it is. Uh, to, well, I don't, uh, nothing's unfair. I, I'm, you're in a public position. You, you expect right. people to criticize or have your own opinion. This is New York, after all. Right. But my sister actually said something pretty funny to me once. She says, people say, oh, you shouldn't be so, uh, so, so scripted. So. Right. But that's who I am. And she says, they just don't know you. Not that's right now. That's who you are. This is a whole different person. No, not at all. Absolutely. No. Well, I'm not giving the Ask facts. Everyone in this room is a totally different. No, is a totally different vibe. Not at all. What one thing, um, the the perception that this is the mayor's NYPD. Well, the what, whole what do you city say, is What do you mayor's. say to people who? <laughs> what do you say to people who say that? The whole city is the mayor's city. So the NYPD, uh, the mayor's experience in the NYPD is invaluable. He was an officer here, um, and and I talked to him often about his perspective and what his experiences were here in the NYPD. Helpful, not a hindrance. It's not a hindrance. It's, it's actually, I think, you have to be able to take experience and advice from, from all corners. And I do that. And the mayor is uh, very willing to express to me what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. And he has a public safety mandate that he imposed upon me, and I intend to actually fill it. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. So you, you think this, the way I speak now Absolutely. is different? Really? Absolutely. No. Totally no. different. Well, I'll tell you right now. You get up there, you got copy, you script, you're going to get to it. The facts, ma'am, and I'm out. So and can that's I tell it. You something? We don't get any of this. So it's on, funny that you podium. say that. It's not a script. I actually write what I say. Well, I, I, so, but I want you to. It's say, still a script if you write. But it, I have but to. But it's like almost like the moment I'm getting ready to go out, I'm actually writing what I want to sure. say because these are points that you have to hit. Don't want to forget. I, well, it's not even a matter of not forgetting. I want to make sure it's right. Right. Because New Yorkers want accuracy. Right. And New Yorkers will fact check you quicker right. than anybody else. Sure. So I want to make sure I give them the best information I have, and but it's got to be accurate. But New Yorkers also keep it real. We mix it up with people. That is me. We want to know who's who but and what's what. I don't think people realize that that is me being real. This is who. I am. But this is a different person. Now, I'm not, gonna, this well, gonna go I'm not talking about crime. Now, we're talking just like, you know, True. but so when, I, when I'm giving information about public safety, I take that very seriously. Sure. I want to give the facts. I want to give them clearly. I want to give them quickly. Sure. And I want to make sure that they have the information they need uh, for this city. But if I'm having a conversation with someone, I'm still, you know, me, mm -hmm. but um, there's a time to laugh. There's a time to be serious. Right. And when I am focused on the safety of this city, I am serious. Totally agree. 
But it, I would just say this, that we knew Ray Kelly. We even knew Howard Safer a little bit. We knew, um, names are escaping me right now, Bill Bratton. Mm -hmm. We knew all these guys, mm -hmm. right? We just kind of knew them. Mm -hmm. We're just getting to know you. I got a feeling we're going to know you better as time goes by. I think unless, there are very unless, few things about me that are similar to my predecessors. Sure, <laughs> but, but you're people. You're the, you're the PC. Yes, you're the I PC. We, need to, we, we, we want to know you. I think it comes down to how effective I am in this position. All right. It does. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yep. Is there anything you want to add that we left out? Um, I think the people of this city uh, should be really cognizant of the fact that the men and women of the NYPD work so hard every day. We ask so much of them. And as evidence from what we saw over on New Year's Eve, they face great danger every day. And they do uh, it most times, as you said, with uh, pay issues that we're concerned about. We've been asking them to work more hours in light of the crime picture that we've seen. But they impress me every single day. All right. Thank you. Okay. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah.